All right, welcome back to Adobe Photoshop 2024. And today we're gonna to take a look at this little guy down here called the contextual menu. And if you've watched a lot of my videos, I have it hidden. I am not used to using it. It's just in the way most of the time, even though it's not really in the way. But for those of you learning Photoshop, this can be very helpful in a different way to work in the program. So let's take a look at what it does. And the great thing about it is this changes as you work. So right now we've just opened this photo and one obvious thing that we might need to do is hit select subject. So you can see we've got select subject and remove background as our options. Over here, we've got the little icon for create new adjustment layer. However, it's gonna make me use this over here. And over here, we've got some other options so we can hide it, we can reset the position or we can pin the bar to a position. So the way this works is I'm just gonna hit Command minus to zoom out. You'll see it moves with the image. If I hit Command plus, it goes back out. I can move this manually and then pin it to a location. So if I wanted to just have this down here, I could simply move it down there and then pin that bar to that location. Or in my case, a lot of times I'll hide it. So if you want this and you do not see it, because in window, the contextual taskbar is unchecked. So if I uncheck it, it disappears. If I check it, it reappears. So the first thing that we have there is select subjects, and that makes a lot of sense. There's different ways in Photoshop a lot of times to do the exact same thing multiple ways. So I could hit select subject here. If I was on a selection tool, I would have select subject, or I could just go select subject, all right? The, what they're trying to do is just put this in a close location so you don't have to scroll all over the windows here to get things. So I can hit select subject, select subject is what I want. Now, this is what's cool. So right here, they have the new generative fill and we'll get to this in a second. So if I wanted to fill this in with something else, I could do it. Right here, we can modify our selection and you can see right here, it's selected this area that I don't want. We can invert the selection and this is not correct. Invert is usually the negative. What they mean is inverse. So usually if you select a subject and you want to select the opposite, it's inverse, which is command shift I like that. Okay. Hit command Z to undo that. But that's what this is doing. It's inverse, even though it says invert. I don't know why they have two different terminologies for the same thing. If I wanted to create a mask, I could click this button and boom, you can see it created a mask. I'm just going to hit command Z to undo that. We have a fill option and right here we have create a new adjustment layer or we could simply deselect to unselect that location. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to this and I'll hit select subject. So in this image, we, we've made the selection, it's selected the bird well and it's done this. And if I come over here to modify selection, it gives you different ways to modify the selection. So we can transform, we can select the border, we can smooth, we can expand, we can contract, we can feather the selection, or we can directly go into select and mask. I'm not gonna use any of them because I wanna show you something else. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the adjustments. Now, when you click adjustments and you have this adjustment out here, so I'm gonna go window, adjustments, and we'll hide that, and now we'll click this, and you'll notice it, all it does is bring up the window, okay? It's not making the adjustment here, it's just bringing the window back up. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit curves adjustments and we'll just brighten it a little bit, all right? And then we'll come back down here to this. And this is where it's beneficial. So right here we have subtract from mask and add to mask. And what this is doing is using the brush, so our brush over here, to paint white or black into the image. So white or black. So white is gonna reveal more and black is gonna hide. And if you remember in our mask up here, I'll just go ahead and show you, it accidentally selected this area and we don't want this area to be in the adjustment. So come back over here and bring this back. So we want to subtract and this is great because what happens is when you click this button, this is much quicker then having to come up here and select the brush, and then it either will automatically select black or white, depending on what you did. In our case, it is remove, 
So I can just paint over this area and then you can see it's removing from that location. So we'll do a little bit more and a little bit more and boom, just like that, that has been removed. If I wanted to add to the selection, when I click this, it's gonna keep the brush, but switch this to white. So I'm gonna click it and boom, it switches it to white. And then I could add to the selection, which I don't really wanna do. So wonderful thing. Right here, we've got the option to modify the mask or the density of it. So if I wanted to reduce the density, which would in effect reduce the amount of the adjustment, I could click there and this little window pops up. If I wanted to do temporarily or altogether, hide the mask and not use it, I can do that. That's gonna allow me to see what the difference is. And this last button will let us change the view. So if we wanted to see it with like an overlay, I could click overlay and it shows me an overlay. So the area that is not in red is the area of the mask that has been selected or is in white. And the area that's in black is in red. And you could do this in black and white. It doesn't make a difference. We'll go ahead and turn that off. And depending what you're using over here. So if I was in the crop tool, you can see we can change our ratios and all that information. So the great thing about this is, is whatever tool you select, it's gonna bring up the options that refer back to that tool. Now, the last thing that we have here is the generative expand, and this is the new AI feature. So in this case, if I wanted to fill an area, and let's just go and do this real simple, and we will hit vert to go back in time. And we're going to get rid of out of the crop tool. And I'm just going to say this little circle. And right here, we're going to hit generative fill. I'm going to put add a koi fish jumping out of the water. And what's important to notice when you're doing this, the more exact you can get, the, the better off you're going to be. But remember, this is using AI credits on your computer for every time you do this. And what this is going to do, it's going to do its best to try to add that to the image in that location. The image quality is not great. However, usually it does a pretty good job, but we'll see. So we'll just hit return and it will take a second to do that. And then in that location, it should put a jumping koi fish. So you can see it tried to add a koi fish jumping out of the water. Looks like it's got two koi fish. They're weird looking koi fish. And yeah, it doesn't look realistic. That's what generative fill does. I can click and get some other images. You can see that's definitely not even a koi fish. And that's a carp. So it didn't get any of that wrong. This one looks pretty good, but it's definitely not the right type of fish that we're looking for. Well, that is the contextual taskbar here inside of Photoshop and what it does. Hopefully you have found this video helpful. If you have and could give us a thumbs up, that would be absolutely wonderful. If you have any comments or questions, you could leave those below and don't forget to subscribe.